Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha, the Omega, the Beginning, and the Ending, who was, and is, and is to come, the Lord God Almighty, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. Amen. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Yeshua, Jesus as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. I believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three, are one. According to John 14 <clears throat> and 1 John 5, verse 7, in the King James Bible. Amen. Now, I, I do believe that Christ uh, was God or is God in the flesh, or when he walked the earth, he was God in the flesh. <laughs> a, a son of Adam, uh, born by the Holy Spirit, I, I believe he uh, was, you know, born through the Virgin uh, Mary, and he lived a perfect and sinless life and he gave his life as a sacrifice on the cross according to isaiah 53 uh, and he was without sin and, and that was so that he could pay for our sins uh, the the old testament says there is no forgiveness of sins uh, without the shedding of blood i think that's in the book of leviticus i think i want to say leviticus 17. now because Christ has paid for our sins on the cross, we could be at peace uh, with Him and the Father and the Holy Spirit if we turn away from our sins, if we believe in His words according to the Bible, and uh, are born again by water and by the Spirit. Amen. Now, I don't believe it's once saved, always saved. I believe you have to continue in faith you have to overcome, you know, Jesus said uh, to all seven churches, to those who overcome, will he give the kingdom and the rewards. Okay, any one of us can fall away from faith, can go back to our sin like a dog returns to his vomit. Okay, so we have to strive to enter into the narrow way, according to Jesus' own words, because Broad is a gate that leads to destruction, and many there be that goes in, but narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Okay, that's sort of paraphrasing, but that's what Christ said. And he also, Christ also said that he's going to say to many, you know, they're going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not do this? Did we not do that? Did we not cast out demons? And Jesus will say to them, Depart from me, workers of iniquity or lawlessness, I never knew you. Okay, so there are those who have faith in Christ, that they, they believe in Christ, but Christ will say he never knew them. Okay, so we have to make sure that we truly know Christ. Amen. And that, that's through turning away from our sins, following Christ and his commandments, studying the New Testament Bible, applying it to our life, and picking up our cross daily. Amen. Now, with all of that said, I wanted to talk about Hebrew astronomy. Now, astronomy is not the same as astrology. And when people say astrology, usually they're talking about the, you know, the constellations uh, of the zodiac, the, the 12 signs that are supposed to, you know, correspond to your birth month and it's supposed to influence your personality. Okay, I don't believe that. I think that is a Luciferian doctrine. I think it's a false religion from Satan. And I think we should stay away from those ideas and, and those false uh, beliefs. Now, astronomy is a study of the stars and, and the moon and the suns and the constellations. Okay, now there's nothing wrong in it of self uh, uh, when you look at the constellations. That is, if you look at it with the proper understanding. And uh, we have to look to what the Bible says 
uh, regarding the sun, moon, and the stars. Okay, now this is the book of Genesis chapter 1, okay, and it says that, let's see, Genesis 1 verse 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Okay, so there we see that God created the lights in the heaven. That's talking about the sun, moon, and the stars. Okay, and they are for signs, for seasons, or the moedims, the appointed times, and for determining the days and the years. Now, I personally believe they also uh, determine the month as well, and, and I want to explore that as well uh, using stellarium and, and some extra biblical uh, Jewish sources okay and uh, how it corresponds with what the Bible says about the first month and, and so on and so forth all right so so that's just the basis of Hebrew astronomy okay um, again it's not talking about astrology all right now let's take a look here at Leviticus 23 talking about the seven holy days of Moedims of the Lord that the children of Israel were to observe every year. Okay, now there's seven of them because that's God's perfect number. Now, it says here, Leviticus 23 verse 5, In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Okay, so we obviously know that the the first month is you know the 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 time that Israel or you know the children of Abraham sacrificed the Passover lamb in Egypt okay and it's also a foreshadowing of Christ who is the lamb of God that takes away our sin okay Christ is the Passover lamb now what's interesting is that it says here that the 14th day of the first month is the Lord's Passover. Well, according to Leviticus 23, uh, it's also the Abib month. Okay, that, that's basically the month that the barley harvest was ripe. And, and that's how they were able to offer the first fruits, which I think is like three days after Passover or something like that. Okay, and so... We know that Passover, the first month, Nisan, has to be in the springtime when the barley is ripe. Okay, so that's usually like March or April, depending on the year, okay? But I believe that whether it's March or April, it's always supposed to start in the same constellation. And there's various Jewish sources that say that the sun must be uh, approaching uh, the Aries sign and that is a sign is it Aries it, it's a sign of the ram okay so whatever constellation I, I think the, I think it's Aries so the Sun has to be an Aries representing the lamb okay and that's that's uh, always usually in March or April so that's an interesting parallel in it of itself. But if we continue on down the line, we see that on the seventh month, let's see, where do I find it? I think it's further down. Yeah, here we go. Leviticus 23, verse 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. So here we see that this is the seventh month. All right. Now, I personally believe that this, month, this year, we're a month off. Okay, I personally believe 
that the true feast of trumpets based on the, the position of the sun and the constellation of Libra uh, I think it is probably around October 25th or 26th is the true feast of trumpets now now I personally don't believe that the rapture has to happen on the feast of trumpets I think it could but I don't think it has to okay I, th I think that it'll be a sudden catching up event you know as Jesus said two will be in the f uh, field one shall be received and the other refused in some translations and 1 Corinthians 15 says that in the twinkling of an eye, basically those the dead in Christ and the alive and those who are alive and remain in Christ will be caught up into the air to be with Christ forever. Okay, that's paraphrasing, but you can read that in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52. Now with all that said, <clears throat> I wanted to go into Stellarium and show you that I, I believe that in order for the seventh month to begin the sun has to appear in or be approaching the the libra constellation uh now again the constellations i believe are biblical okay every year the sun cycles in the same cluster of stars uh every month you know it's like clockwork okay so, so I do think that is biblical and even in the book of Job it talks about the Maseroth, okay, the Hebrew constellations. So let's take a look at Stellarium real quick because I think that October is the true month. Now here, if you look down here uh, at October 25th, 2022 on the right hand side on the bottom. Okay, uh, you'll see that this is the correct date, I believe, for the Feast of Trumpets. Now, if we zoom in here to the moon, you could see the moon doesn't have, you know, isn't showing even a sliver. And that it's at, on the left-hand side, you could see that it's at 0% on the phase. Okay, that means that 0% of the moon is showing, meaning that the new moon is probably going to be October 26th or 27th if Stellarium is correct and, and I believe it is personally now what's interesting is that the moon is always uh, next to the Sun when it's a hundred percent vanished that means uh, that the new moon is about to appear okay and here we see that the sun is in the transition from the Virgo constellation and it's actually going to travel down into the Libra scales. So the whole, the whole month from October 25th onwards, the sun will be in the Libra scales. So that I believe is how we determine that the seventh month begins is because you have the new moon okay Leviticus 23 talks about the first day of the seventh month well the first day of the month begins on the new moon okay the sighting of the crescent moon so essentially um, the seventh month I believe is probably October 26 or 27th and and then I'll show you how the Sun will actually be in the constellation of the Libra scales uh, for the seventh Hebrew month. Okay, so here's the 26th, the 27th, October 28th, October 29th. Okay, and here's November 1st, November 5th. Oops, where'd it go? Okay, so here we see that November 9th, okay, the sun is completely in Libra. Okay, and it that's only what is that nine plus uh, about six so that's about 15 days into the seventh month and it's completely in the Libra constellation all right so uh, the next new moon doesn't happen uh, until let's see the next new moon is about the 24th of November. OK, 
Okay, so here we see the new moon is once again, it's at 0% and it's right next to the sun, signaling that it's about to transition into a new month, a new moon cycle. Okay, and here you see the sun is then going to go into the Scorpio sun sign. Okay, now the only reason it's called a sun sign is because the sun travels through it at the same time every year. Okay. Now, I wanted to talk about the Libra scales. It's very interesting that the seventh month has to do with, you know, the Feast of Trumpets. But the seventh month is known as Tishri in, in the Hebrew. And it's actually the month where all of the all of the people of Israel in the Old Testament were to be their sins were to be weighed in the balance and they were you know they were to receive judgment okay for their sins and if they offer uh, the right you know animal sacrifices and atonement and so you know the the month of Tishri has to do with the scales just as you know the month of Nisan has to do with the lamb or the ram okay because it's the month of the Passover and the month that the Lord Jesus Yeshua the Passover lamb was crucified okay so there seems to be a correlation between the actual symbols of the constellations in reference to the biblical uh, significance of that month if that makes sense okay so let's take a look this is a picture now if you just do a google search of, of tishri and uh, the the scales you'll see that the seventh month of, of the hebrew year it is usually always uh, symbolized as a scales and that's interesting because that's a, that's the the constellation that it passes through for, in the seventh month okay Now, this here is a website uh, regarding the Jewish Encyclopedia. Okay, jewishencyclopedia.com, all right? And in, in this article, it talks about the 12 signs of the Masroth and, and, and different uh, symbolism and how the sun passes through these constellations uh, at the same time every year like clockwork okay so this is an interesting article and it talks about the 12 signs okay it says here the duodecimal division of the zodiac is first mentioned in the Sefer Yetzirah which is of unknown antiquity okay so a lot of this is actually Talmudic which isn't really biblical but the Talmud could have borrowed uh, actual truth from the Hebrew people, okay? Now, because if you're living in Hebrew, or, or in Israel rather, <laughs> if you're living in Israel for all these years as a, a, a society, you would, at some point, you'd probably realize that, hey, the moon goes in, or the sun goes into the same uh, constellation uh, at, for the same month every year so you you'd naturally pick up on these things I would think especially if you're looking for certain uh, feast days and, and things of that nature okay now it says here that uh, the constellations of the Mazalot are named in the following order Tele, Shor, Teomim, Sartan, Arye, so on and so forth and it says they correspond to Aries, Taurus, and so on and so forth of the 12 months beginning with Nisan. Okay, Nisan again, I believe, is the uh, the, the ram, the Aries. Okay, now it says here that the motives underlying the choice of the symbolic signs are obvious in the case of some and only conjectural in the case of others. Okay, so... Uh, they're saying that, you know, that this article is saying, well, some of the symbols for the constellations uh, seem to be, you know, obvious, but some may or may not be uh, 
you know, uh, objective, okay? Now it says, all may be traced to Assyrian mythology and influence. The Jews during the Babylonian exile adopted Hebraicized forms of the Assyrian names of the months and constellations. In some instances, the rabbis endeavored to explain the origin of these names. Thus they said that the temple could not be destroyed in the first month, Nisan, since the sign Aries is a reminder of Akeda, okay, Isaac representing the sacrificial, the, the sacrificial lamb, okay, so here we see the lamb being connected with Aries for the first month of Nisan, all right, and then it goes on to conjecture that the second month is Iyar, which is Taurus, or the ox, and it recalls the calf tender and good of Genesis, uh, what is that, uh, 18 verse 7, which Abraham provided for the angels. And the third month, Siwan, the sign Gemini, is the twins, okay, it represents Esau and Jacob. And the fourth month, Tammuz, is a sign of Cancer, which lives in water, represents Moses, who was saved from water. Uh, while in the fifth month, Ab is designated by the sign of the Leo, the lion constellation. Okay, so it, it has all these uh, different uh, conjectures as to what the signs could represent in terms of uh, biblical significance. Okay, so I don't know if all of this is correct, but it's, it's interesting to ponder. Okay, now if we go on and look at this chart that they have here it says the dates at which the dates at which the sun enters the signs of the zodiac in the course of a year are specified in the accompanying table okay so here we see the sun enters into uh aries aries being the ram okay the male uh the male sheep and that is approximately March 21st, which is Nisan. And uh, the approximate Hebrew date is March 27th. Okay, and the astro uh, astronom astronomical signs, astronomical signs. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of brain fog at the moment. Okay. The astronomical signs is, you know, the the uh, the horns of, of the the ram. All right. Now, if we go down to the seventh month, we see the seventh month is Libra, and it's called Matznaim, and it's September twenty fourth usually, and the approximate Hebrew date is September twenty second. And it is the month of Tishri, okay? And it has the scales here for the astronomical sign. Okay, so they're saying that the sun enters into these, you know, constellations supposedly every year at the same time. Well, according to Stellarium, the sun is not entering into Libra until October, okay? So that's why I think that the months uh, are, are one month off this year. Okay, I, I think they're, was it one month behind or is that, yeah, I think they're one month behind or one month forward. Um, but, but yeah, I think that everything is pushed back uh, to, to a month later. Uh, okay, so I think that the true Feast of Trumpets is in October and then I think Tabernacles uh, is probably going to be in uh, November okay so let's continue now this is some sort of Jewish it's like a Jewish college in Jerusalem and here we see it's ohr.edu and it's talking about the Jewish year seen through its months, the seasons of the moon. And it says that the month of Tishri is always attributed to the scales. Okay, the Libra constellation, I believe, is why 
as well as it being the month that you know all of the people of Israel their deeds were be were being weighed in the balances okay being judged uh, by the Most High God and uh, then atonement for sins were made okay on the Feast of Atonement all right so it says here the seventh is always holy the seventh day is Shabbat the seventh year of Shemitah the sabbatical year so too the seventh month Tishri is sanctified with more commands and festivals than any other month the sign of the month of Tishri Libra is called in Hebrew Matznaim which literally means balances it's not difficult to see the connection between the symbol of the balances and the month of Tishri for the first day of Tishri is Rosh Hashanah I, I actually believe it's not Rosh Hashanah but actually the Feast of Trumpets okay according to Leviticus 23 it says a day when the future of the world and all its inhabitants literally hangs in the balance okay and uh, then it goes on to say that if he does one sin he tips the balances of his own life and that the whole world to the negative side uh, i'm not sure if that's biblical or not so let's not so the in this website you know i'm not i'm not saying that this website is good i'm just saying hey look even the hebrew colleges in jerusalem are you know assigning the libra scales to the the month of tishri so i i don't know uh, i don't even think that they acknowledge christ as the messiah okay so they probably have a lot of uh you know ungodly material mixed in with the torah okay so they probably have in this website like maybe the zohar maybe the uh the different extra biblical writings such as the talmud okay so we have to be very careful when we look at any uh, jewish sources because a lot of times they're tainted with extra biblical information now let's continue it says here can you imagine what it would, must be like for yom kippur the day of atonement to last two days for most of us 25 hours of fasting is quite enough but during the second world war there were people who fasted 49 hours two days of yom kippur i'm not sure why that was but in anyhow um the the seventh month is attributed to you know weighing one's life uh you know taking account of one's actions and, and god ultimately is going to judge people uh, i believe on the seventh day okay now when i say the seventh day i'm talking about uh his return i believe is on the morning of the seventh day meaning the 7,000th year from uh, the creation of Adam, okay? I've done lots of studies on this, but I believe that uh, Christ will rule and reign in Jerusalem on the seventh day, and he will judge all the, all the people at his return. So it's, there you have the, the scales being attributed to, uh, you know, judging, and then Christ will rule all nations with a rod of iron for his millennial kingdom. That's in, you know, Revelations 20 and Zechariah 14 and so on and so forth. So in a way, you know, the seventh month has to do with, you know, judging people's sins and weighing their deeds and actions on the scales. Okay, so that's very interesting in my opinion. And if you think about it, at the end of the millennial kingdom of Christ after the thousand years, according to Revelations 20, that's when the great white throne judgment is. And that's the final, final judgment for all of mankind. So that, that's a perfect symbol of the scales as well, if you think about it. All right. So just a, a summary. Okay. Uh, I do not... Uh, I don't support, you know, the 12 signs of the Zodiac, the Western Zodiac or the Chinese Zodiac or anything like that. 
I, I only base uh, the consolations on what the Bible says <clears throat> and the possibility and the likeliness that <coughs> that the sun goes through the same consolations and that those consolation symbols such as the lamb for the month of Nisan such as Tishri, the scales for, for the seventh month where all the people of Israel were to be judged uh, I think there might be some uh, some hints there within the consolations within those you know uh, festivals or those holy days okay so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and, and and I believe that you know through the sun moon and stars we are able to to determine uh, the actual uh, months and and, uh, and the timing of the months okay so we, we could if we look at just the sun moon and stars we could determine hey this is a the first month or hey this is a third month or hey this is the seventh month on the hebrew calendar just based on where the sun is and uh, where the moon cycle is in terms of uh the amount that the sun is filled if that makes sense okay so i, I pray this was a blessing I apologize if you know my thoughts were a little scattered in, in this video uh, I've just been you know having a lot of brain fog and uh, it's just hard for me to to think uh, clearly uh, some days and um, my, my health has been struggling so any prayers would be appreciated I pray this was a blessing and I hope to see you all in heaven very soon and shalom until next time. Amen.